So many people get caught up in different ways to optimize their ads, special structures, different creatives, dynamic optimizations, Advantage Plus. There's 101 things that you're being told every single day that you have to do in order to get your business from $8 million to $9 million to $10 million, or even from $0 to your first $1 transaction. There's a hidden gem in your account already that you should be looking at to actually guide your performance in a much better, much more cohesive way. I'm gonna show you how we implemented this exact strategy for a new client that we onboarded and how the results have impacted their overall business. I'm also gonna show you the exact report that we use on our side, and I'm gonna show you how you can get this exact same report in the Facebook ads platform completely free. We started with this client at the beginning of February. If we compare February 1st to February 29th versus the previous month, what we have here is a 33.49% increase in ROAS and we have a 15% increase in purchase conversion value. First, we're comparing February 2024 to the previous month, January 3rd to January January 31st. And we took over this specific client account on February 1st at the very beginning of the month. And what we can see here is that through this single optimization, we improve the return on ad spend by 33.49% month over month. We have this huge sheet that we like to use that is the client breakdown sheet that aggregates all of our reports into one place. And we could just enter the client's account name right here and it'll show us all of the breakdowns, color coded, everything that we need. What I'm actually going to show you is how you can get this exact data in your Facebook ads platform free. What you do is when you are in your ads manager, all you need to do is click on ads reporting, create new report, name your report, whatever you would like and find your ad account. Make sure you're using the pivot table and click continue. And then once you're in here, they're going to default you to a bunch of random columns, most of which are going to be ignored for this sake. We're just going to start this from scratch. So I'm actually going to go in and just get rid of all of these columns. What we're going to start with is an age breakdown. We have age and we're going to go to metrics and we're going to use amount spent and impressions. And then we're going to get our purchase metrics in here. So we're going to actually just type in purchase and we would like to get purchases, cost per purchase, purchase conversion value and purchases ROAS. It's going to give us a breakdown of where is the spend going and what is the return on ad spend for each of these cohorts. Now, what you're going to notice right off the bat, for some reason in this account, Facebook was spending a ton of money in the 65 plus age group at a 1.67 ROAS. That is heavily weighing down our return on ad spend. What what we did here instead was we looked at 18 to 24, 25 to 34, 35 to 44, and check out these return on ad spends, 3.77, 2.04, 4.16. These have less overall spend. As these scale up, we're probably going to see some of this ROAS drop down, but it's not even close to 1.67. What we're going to do here and what we already did to improve this account, we focused on these three age ranges. We're literally just saying Facebook spend less on 65 plus, spend more on 18 to 44. Now you might say, wait, but what about scale? I don't want to miss all those customers. If you're doing 10 to $50 million in revenue, you might be right. And you might have to expand upon these. If you're under $10 million in revenue, I promise you there are $10 million out there in these three age groups. These three age groups are plenty of room for you. You might see the opposite impact. You might see 65 plus is your dominant age group. In that case, you should really focus on that 65 plus. And then you can start to tune your marketing to that specific age group. It doesn't end here because the first breakdown we did was age. And in this client in particular, age was our biggest win by far. Next piece is actually gender. And what we noticed here is that male actually outperformed female by a decently sizable margin. So we have a 1.99 ROAS on female and a 2.86 on male. Historically, this is a female oriented brand. So what our conclusion was, was that men are actually purchasing either partially for themselves, but mostly for their female counterparts. Instead of completely removing female here to sacrifice all of this volume, all we did was create a male specific audience and drive a few extra dollars to it to actually increase the total volume that we're getting on men. You would think that Facebook pushing Advantage Plus and really the entire industry pushing broad audiences would fix this for us already. It would not spend our money where it's least likely to make money. For the most part, it does do this pretty effectively. Now you have to get into these breakdowns to actually understand what's happening, where's your money going to make sure Facebook is guiding it in the right direction. The next piece that you're gonna wanna look at is actually platform. In this case, we don't have a very clear winner in platform for this brand in particular. But what I want to call out is that from time to time with clients that we work with, we'll see Instagram or Facebook work tremendously different than the other. In this case, Facebook is dominant at $20,000 in ad spend over the last two months at a 2.2 return on ad spend. Instagram has only spent 4,600 at a two. I have no problem running both of these letting advantage plus placements continue to run. That's just where we allow all our targeting to fall on any platform. If you see something like a four, 
return on ad spend versus a one or versus a two, you need to have the conversation with yourself for where does the brand fit the most? Don't fall in the trap for making a change on a 10% difference like 2.2 versus 2.03. And definitely don't fall in the trap for any of these breakdowns if you don't have enough data to support this analysis. You should have dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of purchases to really support making a decision like this because you are limiting your scope of advertising, which could improve or change your CPMs, your CPCs, your click-through rates, and overall making sure your marketing dollars are most impactful and effective. The final and one of my favorite breakdowns that we like to do is the day of week analysis. What we tend to see is that across the industry, no matter what brand you are, there are certain days of the week where your brand converts better. I'm going to give you a few examples. If you're in the pet care industry, there's a really high chance that whatever day you spend most with that pet, let's just say it's dogs. So the most common days to spend the most amount of time with dogs would be Friday, Saturday, and Sundays. You will see conversion rate go up because the person who is buying is actually thinking about the dog and therefore making purchase decisions for their animal. Now you might see the opposite for different industries. So you just need to be mindful of when does the purchase actually occur for the consumer and not just let Meta or Facebook ads spend all your money at the same rate every single day. All you need to do is go to day. The hard part here is you then need to export this out and push it into a pivot table. And what we noticed is we could see Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we see dominance in our return on ad spend. We see 2.6, 2.2, and 2.2, where Sunday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we see a slight dip. We've actioned on this very slightly. We haven't overcompensated for this. And I just want to really make sure that's super clear. Unless you have hundreds of data points here, do not action for a 10% or 5% difference. Really action on big 20, 30% differences. We need to find the big swings. We are looking in the Facebook reporting section. We're breaking down by things like gender, day, age, platform, and a whole lot of other things that you can play around with here. And you're just trying to figure out where should I not let Facebook spend my money? If these big swings are important to you, let me know in the comments below. If you're spending over $30,000 a month in advertising, hit us up at themoonlighters.co. If you're under $30,000 in ad spend, keep working, implement these strategies and scale up. We're happy to work with you when the time comes. Appreciate y'all watching. Bye.